Between 1970 and 1979, 40 people were awarded acting trophies at the Academy Awards. Of those 40 wins, which ones do I think were the best? In this latest video, in my series Oscar Top 10, I'm going to choose the 10 best acting winners of the 1970s. Here we go. Number 10, Louise Fletcher, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. There are 18 patients on this ward, Mr. McMurphy, and you have to have a majority to change ward policy. So you gentlemen can put your hands down now. The great Louise Fletcher passed away just a few days ago, leaving behind a legacy of excellent performances over many decades. But her finest, most iconic role by far has to be her chilling turn as Nurse Ratchet in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, directed by Milos Forman. Jack Nicholson is the star of the movie, as he should be, but we remember Louise Fletcher just as well in the days that follow, her unnerving presence a necessary component of this extraordinary film. For my mother and my father, I want to say thank you for teaching me to have a dream. You are seeing my dream come true. Thank you. Number nine, Cloris Leachman, The Last Picture Show. Why am I always apologizing to you, you little fellow? Three months I've been apologizing to you without you even being here. I haven't done anything wrong. Why can't I quit apologizing? My favorite supporting actress win of the 1970s has to be Cloris Leachman for her pitch-perfect turn in The Last Picture Show as Ruth, an aging wife who turns to a young man for companionship. Leachman might best be remembered for her skills in comedy, but this one role showed she also had the makings of a tremendous dramatic actress. The ensemble in Peter Bogdanovich's film is so strong that it's kind of hard for anyone to be singled out, but Leachman's final scene, which he apparently did on the very first take, is raw, powerful, and devastating. I'm having an amazing life, and it isn't over yet. <laughs> Remember when Ben Johnson said in the last picture show, I have fought all my life against whatever he said, and I feel... I've fought all my life against cliches, and look at me, I'm a hopeless cliché. Number eight, Robert De Niro, The Godfather Part Two. The Joe the Greek and Darcy Gunn Avenue, Frank Pignataro, and Tishinko Shradi, and you don't know any of the My favorite supporting actor win of the 1970s is Robert De Niro for his astonishing breakthrough performance as a young Vito Corleone in The Godfather Part Two directed by Francis Ford Coppola. I can't imagine how scary it would have been for any actor to try to fill the shoes recently occupied by Marlon Brando, but De Niro makes the role his own while also honoring what Brando did before. His turn is quietly affecting, with moments of pure brilliance that gave us a preview of so many great performances that were still to come from De Niro. I think uh, this is a very richly deserved award. I think uh, Robert De Niro is an extraordinary actor and he is going to enrich the film films that are made for years to come uh, and i thank you on his behalf number seven faye dunaway network this network hasn't one show in the top 20 this network is an industry joke and we better start putting together one winner for next september i want a show developed based on the activities of a terrorist group one of the most original and stunning cinematic achievements of the 1970s is one of my favorite films of all time, Sidney Lumet's Network, which features an ensemble of actors that are top to bottom spectacular. Faye Dunaway gives the performance of her lifetime as Diana, the ambitious head of a small network's programming department. She and William Holden strike just the right balance of sweetness and sadness in their May-September romance, and the lack of humanity she exudes, especially in the second half, gives the film a lasting, haunting quality and the great generosity of a rare group of actors, company of actors, in particular William Holden, Robert Duvall, and Peter Finch. Number six, Diane Keaton, Annie Hall. Oh God, what a, what a dumb thing to say, right? I mean, you say it, you play well, and then right away, I have to say you play well. Oh, oh God, Annie, well, oh well. <laughs> La-di-da, la-di-da, la-la, yeah. What a neat Oscar win this was. A quirky, comedic performance that shows everything Diane Keaton is great at. 
She had been collaborating with Woody Allen on many films before, like Sleeper and Love and Death, but this was the best film they made together, and it's still to date Keaton's finest, most famous performance. The way she greets Allen after the tennis match is particularly a classic. She brings so much heart to the role, making Annie a three-dimensional person through and through. I'm very honored to have been nominated with actresses like Jane Fonda and Shirley MacLaine and Anne Bancroft and Marsha Mason. This is um, something. Anyway, Annie Hall was a, a wonderful experience for me, and I, um, I just would like to say thanks to Woody and thank you. Thank you very much. Number five, Jane Fonda, Clute. What kind of party did you have in mind? We could, uh, we could have a nice half and half party for 50. Mm -hmm. We could have a good time for 50. I've loved Jane Fonda in many films and performances, but this one will always be my favorite of hers as New York prostitute Brie Daniels in Alan J. Pakula's brilliant 1971 drama, Clute co-starring Donald Sutherland. She just oozes charisma, sensuality, danger, but she's also fighting lots of inner demons that are slowly making their way to the surface. Before filming began, Fonda was begging Pakula to pick any other actress for the role, thinking she wouldn't be able to pull it off, but does she ever, Fonda in command of her craft in every hypnotic scene. Thank you. Thank you very much, members of the Academy, and thank all of you who applauded. There's a great deal to say, and I'm not going to say it tonight. I would just like to really thank you very much. Number four, Marlon Brando, The Godfather. Look on the mask of my boy. Is there a more iconic Oscar-winning performance of the 1970s? I'm not sure there is. The name Marlon Brando instantly bringing to mind his beloved performance as Vito Corleone in Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather. Just the opening scene of this three-hour epic is enough to warrant Brando the Academy Award, his voice quiet, his face covered in shadow, the character's demeanor and intentions so immediately clear to the viewer. Like Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs, Brando disappears for large chunks of the movie, but his presence is always felt, no matter whom we're spending time with. Marlon Brando famously refused his Oscar at the 1973 ceremony, but that doesn't in any way diminish his well-deserved victory. I beg at this time that I have not intruded upon this evening and that we will, in the future, our hearts and our understandings will meet with love and generosity. Thank you on behalf of Marlon Brando. Number three, Peter Finch, Network. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! Another person who didn't accept his well-deserved Oscar for Best Actor was Peter Finch, not because he refused it, but because he tragically passed away a few weeks before the 1977 ceremony. This marked the first ever posthumous Oscar win in an acting category, and what a stunning performance it is. Finch on another level of amazing as the suicidal TV news anchor Howard Beale. It's rare for an actor to get one iconic scene in a movie. Finch gets several. The first, his saying on air that he's going to commit suicide. The second, his telling the world to turn off their TV screens and start living. Credit has to be given to the screenplay by Patty Chayefsky, of course, but Finch takes that script and makes Howard Beale into a living, breathing, truth-telling prophet unlike any other character we've seen in the movies. Since he isn't here, I'll always cherish this for him. And before he died, he said to me, darling, if I win, I want to say thanks to my fellow actors who have given me encouragement over the years. Number two, Liza Minnelli, Cabaret. Listen, we're practically living together. So if you only like boys, I mean, I wouldn't dream of pestering you. Well, do you sleep with girls or don't you? Sally, you don't ask questions like that. I do. What a challenging and breathtaking role. What perfect casting. What magic the divine Liza Minnelli brings to club entertainer Sally Bowles in Bob Fosse's landmark musical Cabaret, co-starring Michael York, 
and Joel Grey. The dance numbers throughout the film are electric, but it's not just the singing and dancing that makes Minnelli pop off the screen, it's her intimate dramatic scenes too, often with York, that show just how talented Minnelli is as an actor. She makes Sally into an absolute force of nature, and we, the viewers, are the lucky ones for it. Making the film of Cabaret was one of the happiest times of my whole life, and I would like to thank everybody connected with it, but most especially the artistic staff, Mr. Fossey, and Fred Ebb, and John Kander, and Thank you for giving me this award. You've made me very happy. Before we get to my top choice, here are the five runners-up. Gene Hackman, The French Connection. Although I prefer some other Hackman lead performances, especially in The Conversation, his turn in William Friedkin's action drama made him a star and the well-respected actor he is. Tatum O'Neill, Paper Moon. Although this is clearly a lead performance, the very young O'Neill won in the supporting actor's category, the category fraud doesn't take away at all from her witty, delightful performance in Peter Bogdanovich's film, Christopher Walken, The Deer Hunter. This is still the best work Walken has ever done on screen, the character's devastating arc throughout the narrative, giving Walken so many layers and so many notes to play, all the way to the emotional ending. Ellen Burstyn, Alice doesn't live here anymore. It always makes my heart happy, to remember the great Ellen Burstyn has an Oscar, she won it for her sublime, complex performance in Martin Scorsese's mesmerizing film. Her character also goes through a major arc, and Burstyn is a perfect match for the material. Beatrice Strait, Network. I couldn't reach the end of this video without giving a shout out to this fantastic Oscar win, that beautiful rarity of an actor winning for basically all of a single scene. Straight is jaw-droppingly good in her one major moment in Network where she has a few choice words for her husband. I simply adore the films of the 1970s and I love the performances. It was hard to choose my favorite 15. How could I possibly choose the very best one? You could put Minnelli there easily or Finch or Brando or Fonda. They all kind of circle the number one spot, but if I had to pick only one, if I had to make that call, well, we started this video celebrating the amazing performance of the late Louise Fletcher. Let's end it by celebrating the equally brilliant, commanding, pitch-perfect performance of the one and only Jack Nicholson, also for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> How about it, you creep, you lunatics, mental defectives? Let's hear it for Blue Goose Randall back in action. Nice shirt, Chesaroo. Nicholson is, in a word, spellbinding, in the role of Korean War veteran and criminal R.P. McMurphy, who pleads insanity and ends up in a mental institution where he comes face to face with a tyrannical nurse ratchet. His going toe to toe with Louise Fletcher provides one of the film's many joys, but there's also the scenes of friendship and community he builds with the other patients. There's his energy, his freshness, his infectious joy for acting that comes through in every scene. And what ultimately pushes him into my number one slot is that at the 1976 ceremony, he was grossly overdue for an Oscar win after losing four times prior for Easy Rider in 1970, Five Easy Pieces in 1971, The Last Detail in 1974, and Chinatown in 1975. All four of those brilliant performances were worthy of an Oscar victory, and it was about time for Nicholson to take the gold trophy. How perfect that he would finally win for what is arguably his finest screen performance. Jack Nicholson is absolutely phenomenal in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and he's my choice for the number one acting win at the Oscars of the 1970s. I guess this proves there are as many nuts in the Academy as anywhere else. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> since you gave me the chance, uh, I'm really happy to get an opportunity to thank Saul and Michael and uh, Louise and Brad and uh, Lawrence and Bo and uh, all of the guys in the company, all of the Phoebe's Brigade. And uh, I'd like to thank Miss Pickford, who incidentally, uh, I believe, was the first uh, actor to get a percentage of her pictures. <laughs> uh, and speaking of a percentage, last but not least, my agent who uh, 
about 10 years ago advised me that I had no business being an actor. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what are your favorite acting Oscar wins of the 1970s. Is there anyone you think I left off the list? See you next time.